All right, chapter two, we're the Roundtable Podcast. That was a little bit smoother of reading, not crazy as uh, the first chapter, but what do you think, Danny? Yeah, it's starting to flow a little bit more, and we're getting more pieces of the puzzle now of Corey yeah. Gregory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't feel as emotional, which I was hoping was going to be a little bit better because the first one was just so crazy. But I think getting across that you have to really grab on to why you want things to change. I think there's a lot of people that want things to change, but you have to rely on them. And that's what I want people to realize through the stories mm -hmm. is what is your version of that rage that you can grab and say, on those days when I don't want to fucking do this and this sucks, I got to rely on why I want it to change so bad. Mm -hmm. And I think when you can tap into that, it's big. So I'm trying to get that across. Yeah, I think the chapter one set the foundation with the emotion because like you can't fabricate what you were talking about no, you know dude. what i mean so now that kind of sets sets the you know sets it up for chapter two perfectly yeah trayvon yeah first to start off um the reading skills were above my expectations oh thank you trayvon. Um, other than that though yeah <laughs> i mean this chapter is really important because like just a, a big i mean it just answers the one question why yeah. And that's a lot. That's a thing that a lot of people struggle with is just like your why on why you want to, why you just want to, you know, I mean, just be better for yourself in just mm -hmm. the first place. And so I think that this chapter will be really good for finding out what drives people. You identify with this chapter, Trayvon? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, I figured you did. Yeah. I was thinking as I was reading it, some father stuff, some yeah. just like situational type stuff. I'm like, I bet Trey relies on a lot of his stuff. I think we all do. But I was just as yeah. I was reading it, I was thinking, I bet you fuck with this one for, yeah, sure. for sure. That's cool. Yeah, Cole. Like, I definitely resonate a lot with this one, too. Like, this one is, like, whenever I was growing up and stuff like that, I, I was feeling these same things. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest thing that you asked yourself was the why not me. That's, like, the biggest thing is, like, why can't you be the guy who is an inspiration for your family or set the yep. change? That's, like, one of the biggest keys to this. And I don't know where that came from other than I just didn't have any other answers, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Because then I would look and go, well, okay. That guy did that. Just the few examples that I spoke about in chapter one. I'm like, so they had to ask themselves that at some point. And that's why I kept thinking, like, what is the difference between how people are able to ascend to this and me? Um, what were they willing to do? And, and every time I would come into a crossroads, and I continually do this even till today, like even with the show, as we're growing the show, and I think, why can't we do these things that I'm seeing these bigger people do. Like mm -hmm. we're that good. I believe in us that much. That's why I'm doing this project with you guys. You know what I mean? Like I believe that we have a lot to offer. So it's like you start to think those, those why not me questions. People don't in, ask that. People don't ask themselves that question. The normal ever, person. I don't think. And not to mention it. It like, like you read the question, like, why do you want to change? But like people usually just kind of gloss straight over that because it's hard work to actually like really think about. Well, that it's question. painful. That's what I talk yeah, about. Exactly. Like yeah. you have to dig into the pain because it it's it hurts, mm -hmm. and and you got to but you have to rely on that hurt, so you can make it better. That's I think that's part of the digging in. This is not easy. Yeah, yeah. Takes, I mean, people don't want to be like vulnerable, basically. Yeah. But I think though that you putting you just writing out what you wrote out though and just being vulnerable in itself though yeah. it helps people like look at themselves in that way though sure well and if you think about it the reason why i'm able to be vulnerable is because i have real confidence yeah mm -hmm. because i believe and i mean that's how i got here if i didn't dig like that i wouldn't be here talking right now mm -hmm. I, who the fuck knows where where i would be was be part honest. of it like you kind of like had nothing to lose at that point yeah yeah i think that, i feel like we were already there we was already at the bottom yeah so I'm like, what? Adventure. Why not try? <laughs> yeah. What well, one thing is like maybe you know maybe the person who's listening to this maybe they're not experiencing anything tough like that. Yeah. But them reading this, they'll know once they experience some hard shit. Yeah. They'll have in my mind like why like why the fuck is why am I not the guy stepping up and you know taking this next position like why not fucking me? So I think even if like they can't resonate with that deepness yeah. yet, at one point they will. Yeah, because everybody that's gonna try anything difficult or try to create anything they're gonna they're going to battle something like that that they're gonna have to latch on to. yeah it's just the way it works because nothing just goes eee, yeah. great you know and all the, the time the one thing you said literally <clears throat> right after you said why not me was no one's gonna fucking save you that's, and i think that's huge like no one's gonna put in the work for you no one cares about you it's all up to you well i remember thinking this very young like uh, the one situation which my mom's always a little bit embarrassed about when we, we really couldn't pay the rent, we had to move like with my grandparents. And I remember thinking like, is no one coming to like help? And she was just on her own. I remember like, I'll never forget it. 
she was just bawling and was so upset and she just felt like she didn't have a solution, right? And I was thinking to myself like, who's gonna help us? And I'm thinking like, no one's coming. I think you get that realization like, I'm really on my own here. And I'm, I was pretty young then, but like, I started to realize like, hmm, I gotta quit thinking that there's some other fictitious, dad's not gonna come back on a white horse and fucking save me. This person isn't gonna pay our bills. Like it's all my mom. And yeah, my grandparents would help when they needed to. That That's for sure. I, I'd never say they wouldn't because they always did. But like you really start to realize that. And that's how I process a lot of stuff now. When I'm hearing hate or doing stuff, I'm like, none of these dudes is paying my bills. None of these dudes is like, like you process things differently when you realize like you can have a group of support, which we have an amazing one, but still your singular focus on your shit at home is on you. Mm-hmm. I can't save any of you guys. I can only help, right, and lend. But the reality is, like, the work that y'all put in is how you get there. And then it complements together as a team. I started to realize that I need to really go at this thing on my own, which is why it also felt really lonely at times, especially when I don't know one person that does the job I want to do. I don't know one person that is even – like, I just didn't know – I didn't really have any, like, any, like, people to really look to that could give me, like, a path. Mm-hmm. So, but that, those questions I asked myself pretty young and then started to realize like that I was going to have to have like some real skills and, and rely on all these things in the tough times to make it through for sure. But people, yeah, people don't like to ask themselves those things. Yeah. I, it blows my mind that like you were thinking about this stuff, like when you were 11 and 12 years old, that was like a little bit, that would probably have been, uh, maybe that like, like 15 or probably that? like the yeah, 13, 14 ish. Yeah. 13, 14, 15, like in that yeah, range. So I was, a, I, was a, I was a little bit, yeah, a little bit more mature. And the other thing is when your parents work all the time and you're kind of on your own, you grow up a little faster. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just, voice. that's just a fucking fact. Yeah. 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 So I, I mean, I was like watching my sister when I was like 12 and she's like seven or eight, you know what I mean? So, cause my mom wasn't home from work yet. So I just think like, those are things, I think I started asking myself more adult type stuff because I was kind of operating like a lot of my own because of the that was the, just what it was yeah and so i think that that helped me a ton which is also why i think my career probably progressed faster too i was in situations pretty young but handling them because i had grown up a little bit faster you're almost like you're like your own therapist in a way yeah you know Th- this is what this is guys yeah because you're just conversing with yourself and then mm-hmm. like yeah just navigating the a lot waters. of self-talk yeah yeah one one interesting thing is uh when you talk about where the confidence came from was that no one was telling you that you couldn't do something, but no one was telling you, like basically showing you what you could do. Yeah. So either. I didn't, I just, I had a, I didn't have either. It was just in the middle, right? So there was definitely like support and I felt that, but there wasn't direction. Mm-hmm. But then there was no one saying, hey, you gotta be a coal miner. That's the fucking way we do it. You know what I mean? No one was saying that either because no one wanted that life to continue. I could tell that. Like my grandpa was kind of tall, so he didn't do coal mining. He did it for a period of time, but he was like, wasn't for him. So he went to construction, but it was like, you know, he wasn't saying you have to come build houses with like, no one was like that. Yeah. But once again, I think most everybody's just trying to survive. They're not really given a yeah. bunch of information on how we're supposed to live or what, what's the aspiration. So there just wasn't, but I think it was a blessing because I didn't really there was like nobody like hindering me or helping me really. Yeah. So I was just kind of in the middle Uh, or that's at least how I remember it. Mm -hmm. So what else you guys got? So, I mean, you were kind of like the trailblazer. I mean, Mm -hmm. for now that we're, you know, it's what, 20 plus years later, Yeah. you know, like what do you recommend? This is probably like 93, 94. Yeah. Like (laughs) what's the practical advice now that, you know, the landscape has changed entirely for someone that's 13 years old. Me and my mom, actually, she listened to chapter one. We talked about this yesterday on the Mm -hmm. phone about how that's surreal to be. Yeah. Yeah. The resources are just so much different. Mm -hmm. So now I could look up to somebody that's a personal trainer. I could read about things I could go do. Like it just isn't the same time. Mm -hmm. So like you younger people that are listening to this, like I didn't have the same opportunities. That's what made them so difficult. So, yeah. and not that today's not difficult because it's got his own whole set of issues with social media and comparisons and don't get it wrong. I see it all with my kids and, and what you guys had to deal with. And, but it, there definitely would have felt a, like a little bit more of a lifeline if I had a resource like this, for God's sakes. If I could have read this book or listened to this myself, I'd have been like, all right, yeah, fuck. I can grab that. I can grab this. 
there just wasn't any, and no one was giving me books or telling me about this yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? So I think that that also fueled the fire to be that person from the Valley mm -hmm. that, that people could go like, well, fuck Corey did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so the funny thing is, is that the one thing I took a lot from my dad is he had a lot of big dreams. He just never really went through with them. So I think by default, I had um, the same kind of thing, maybe genetically, like we both kind of were like big daydreamers, but I just actually believed I thought I could go do them. Mm -hmm. Or at least I was gonna give it a fucking try. <laughs> you know what I mean? At a level that then has been pretty wild. But no, I take a lot of pride in thinking that, um, especially in, in the industry, I've been able to kind of forge some things that are definitely kind of unique to me. But then from our, our, from where we're from, no one had a fitness job and I'm one of the first ones, mm -hmm. you know, and it was at a huge level. So yeah, I take a lot of pride in that for yeah, sure. For sure. It's like kind of like a North star because nowadays there's too much information. Almost, yeah. There's there a almost lot of is. fake stuff yeah. out there too. Which is so. why this being so real is important. Yeah, exactly. So it kind of gives someone like a blueprint for operating almost, you know? Yeah. Trayvon? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I just like, just think that. I don't know. This is a really good. This is just a really good chapter because I just I think it resents a little like a lot of myself and everything like yeah. that. Just because like I mean just figuring out like really like what that chip on your shoulder is and actually being able though to like use it for the good though. That's like the that's another big thing about it too because it can go either way, Trey. Because you could have looked at your situation and been like, well, this sucks. This is just what I'm in, and you could have gone down the same exact rabbit hole too. Because you see that with a lot of people too. You know, like they find out the things that they do hate or they don't like about their lives, but they're not willing to put in the work to change it though either. So they so, repeat the process. So they just repeat the process too. So that's mm -hmm. like, no, that's a huge thing too, because just as, just as easily you could have flipped the other way and been just like, as easy. I can just stay here. Let me put it mind. this. It would have been easier. Yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. just as easy. It would have yeah, been, it, it been. is easier yeah. to just go, this is what, this is the hand I'm dealt. Mm -hmm. This is what yeah. we do. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The hard part is the fucking change. Yeah. So can you can you talk about the like specific, something that's always resonated with me throughout like all the years I've known you and mm -hmm. the content is the generational change stuff. Mm -hmm. And then like all the side stories, like if you're on vacation with your family or something like that. And I love when you tell stories about like you teaching yeah. like one of your nephews or something like that. Can you oh, talk yeah. about like when that started and how that's kind of evolved over time? I think like looking up to my grandpa, you know, he was teaching me like a lot of like man stuff. Right not a lot of like finance stuff or stuff like that, but he was like, I think the way that I like respected him and looked up to him, I was like, all right, I want to be that. Mm -hmm. But then I want to have this other piece on top of it. That is, and I think I didn't really get onto the generational change. Well, I knew whatever I was going to go forge was going to be different. But then when I first moved to Columbus and I was like, all right, I'm coming here to try to make things different, right? Then I was around some like really wealthy people. When I first moved here, I was only here for like, maybe like five or six months, maybe. And I was around the Schottensteins and I saw, I mean, they're the, <laughs> wealth, they're the wealthiest change. family here. <laughs> yeah. And they, they had once again, no clue I was even paying attention, but just the way that they operated was to me, like I was blown away by it. There, any of the conversations I had with some of the younger siblings, like, man, they just, they, just the way they, they just had been taught about wealth. And I started to think to myself, all right, their money's like crazy. You can look it up. But the way that they operated, just in the little bit I saw, I was like, I want that. So that's where like I, I left the valley thinking I'm about to change everything. But then I still didn't have a concept of any type of wealth, real building wealth. I was just coming up here mm -hmm. thinking one day I can open a gym. I didn't know that was going to be as soon as possible. Like I'm, one day could have been 10 years. I didn't know. Right. I'm leaving just like with my money thinking, let's fucking go. Um, but then immediately when I got here, so you gotta figure I'm like 19 years old, you know, I'm chasing some little honey and whatever, like, you know, and I end up around these people and, and then I'm like, all right, let me match up like this way that I kind of held my grandfather up on this pedestal. And then if I can add these pieces to it, then every generation underneath me will have an entirely different process. Mm -hmm. You know, no one from my family graduated from college. You know, like that's not really like a normal thing for us. Like we don't have any like four year degrees in my, in my family. So like, I'm like, whether it's college, whether it's no college, um, understanding, you know, how to build wealth, how to build businesses. Like I just wanted to learn it all mm -hmm. because I wanted to be able to pass it down because once again, 
there's really no internet. It's just kind of starting talking about like 1998, 1999, like shit's not really happening yet. So to me, it was like, can I get this knowledge so I can be that old? Like I remember watching the dad, he's probably a grandpa now, but at that time, dude, I, I swear he was so rich. Money was falling off of him when he was walking in the respect of like the way he, the, his confidence, I saw his confidence. I don't even know his name. I just knew he was one of like the, 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 uh, the, the cousins or older siblings that was just yeah. a baller. He ran like one of the home business or something. He got out the range. Stuff was crispy, like <laughs> buttoned up Tommy Hill figure to the nine. Like so, I was like this, I mean, it looked like he had thousands falling off of him. So you just ex were exposed to an entire new world. Probably they had zero clue if I would go, but I just was there for even, I was at, I was at a graduation party is what it was. High school graduation. I was still only 18 or 19. So <laughs> <laughs> just saying yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was 18. Anyway, I was like, I was, I was uh, heading to the graduation party and I was around a bunch of the family members. And yeah, the one in particular, I don't even know his name but I knew he was a boss and I just watched the way he operated. The respect, the way he had taught a couple of the kids and the way, he, and I was just like, this motherfucker's like multi-millionaire like op operating. And just like I saw that and I was like, yeah, I want that. So yeah, all of these little things like contributed mm -hmm. to me coming up within this, mm -hmm. you know, thing in my mind that everything's gonna be different after me. And then I think when you start to like say shit like that, Cole, Cole's I, to I, hear me, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've heard him start to say more stuff like that too. Like, when you start to say that shit out loud, you believe it even more. And then I like the other people to hear it. And then it makes me want to do it even more. And so I think it was like an affirmation that started with me. That was like my grandparent, or, you know, my grandkids are going to think I was a G. My Everything's going to be different after me. Like I used to just like pump myself like that. It's, it's just self-talk, man. And just like pumping your chest before a game or something. It's the same shit. For sure. But and actually one, backing it up. Yeah. 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 And one thing is, you know, you trying to make an impact on other people and trying to be yourself. Being around you, if any, like you've always said, you know, like these huge dreams and stuff like that. And if we had a little bit of that, you were never like dissing on it. Mm -hmm. You were always open to anything. And I think one of the things is that I'm like, you know, because there's like younger kids that are now like starting to talk sure. to me and stuff like that. Their dreams are too small. Mm -hmm. Like they're not, they're not having these big dreams of like, you know, maybe like it's like phase clan. They want to join that. Yep. Like why not have your own? Like you're why okay. not build your own, you know? Yep. So I don't, yeah. No, I get what you're saying. And so Cole, I think that, um, think about this. My dream was to own a gym. Well, I know it was small, but I owned it when I was 20. So I had to like open my fucking mind up a little bit and go, wait a second. If all of these things that you've heard to this point which I'm sure comes up in a future chapter, got me here already. And it was like a stretch when I say a gym, but it was, it was happening. But I'm like, what the fuck is really possible here? I remember some of my friends like going like, damn, gee, it's already like popping like that. Like I'm going back on Thanksgiving and everyone's like a sophomore in college. I got my own business already. You know, I'm not making crazy money, but I'm like doing my job and it's mine. And so people were asking and starting to ask questions like, damn, what's going on here? And then I started thinking like, what can you really do? And so that power of building confidence because of taking that risk and all those things like started to really build for me. And then I only had to believe once. Th that's the thing. Like, yeah, you're going to go up and down. But when one thing happened the right way, I was like, yeah, yeah I could set it on fire. <clears throat> well, I mean, that kind of snowballed. I mean, it's obviously how much that snowballed because look what happened when you started Muscle Farm. Exactly. When Brad came with to you, you know, I just needed that opportunity because I, but I was prepared for it. So like, well, real quick on that mm -hmm. side note, when he came to you, cause like you were familiar with him before mm -hmm. somewhat. Right. And then he, when he pitched you the idea, were you like immediately fucking in or like, did you have to take some convincing? Mm -mm, no. Cause he, he pitched me to, to work for him. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, you know, I was down my career, you know, eight or 10 years. Yeah. I was like, I'm not working for nobody. Yeah. I'm like, I'm either a partner or I don't do it. <laughs> I mean, that's just, you know, I mean, I was once again, every step of the way, that's why I think this title is so important. I was building, like Cole says, small wins, but those wins were only just the building blocks on my ultimate confidence mm -hmm. to believe that when I would take that step, whatever that step was, the bigger studio, other trainers that I was going to fucking progress myself. This wasn't, you know, this is over a 10 year block before MP even comes into the equation. Mm -hmm. 
So it's like, I think that that right there and along the way, every falter, every mess up, I still was relying on these storylines, by the way, which were just my own made up stories. All of this Mm -hmm. shit is in my head still is by the way. So that's a big part of it. That's extremely important to point out. And I just keep thinking about like Michael Jordan. Yeah. When he, when he would like, even if there wasn't somebody like fucking with he made him it or up. talking shit, he made yeah. it up. That's what I keep thinking about. Yeah, and then he co- go back and say, man, terrible for that guy. I made up a story and thrashed his whole life. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But that, but I think the, the so main good. keys of this entire chapter are the why not me, grabbing on to the things that you can embrace that you don't like, and don't go the easy route. Take the hard route, which is the change. And there was one other, one, one other point that you said, Cole, that I think was a big key, but the why not, the why not me question... Um, oh yeah. And just, and just making that storyline of what you really don't be too small in your dreams. Mm-hmm. Like what is really possible? You know what I mean? Even if you've never seen anybody do it, yeah. which I had not. And I try to remind people that I had zero, you know, like, um, like real mentors or someone to look up to say, do the fitness business this way. In 1999, a personal trainer was a fictitious job that people had in California in my mind. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so anything else with this? Um, I think the last thing I wanted to mention too is sure. like the adverse. So like, obviously you had all this fuel added to the fire. Mm-hmm. So like, and then you actually used it. You didn't just mm-hmm. let it, let it go or whatever for people that don't, that maybe don't have much adversity in their yeah. life or they have, have it easier or whatever it is. Like, what do you, you said do hard shit is obviously that could be one mm-hmm. thing that they do. What, what other things would you have them do? Yeah, I think, I think, uh, do challenges on purpose so you can kind of work on that. I think it's all relative, right? So my thing that's adverse or difficult is different than your thing. That's different than your thing. That's different than your thing. So it might, that's why I said in the book, it might not feel as extreme or it might be more extreme, mm-hmm. but it's still maybe that extreme to you. Right? So I think that so, not everyone, no one's just coasted. Right. Even if they haven't shared it with somebody, there's something they're not happy about. So I would really try to lock on. And what I'm really trying to do through this book is have you learn through stories. You know, I mean, one of the big books for me was Think and Grow Rich. It's all through stories. Mm -hmm. It's all through stories. And then you have to put yourself in that story to really learn the lesson. And I think the podcast that we're doing after kind of matches up some stuff, which I think is really important. But that's really that's really what people need to do. Yeah. So. All right. Chapter two. It's a wrap. Let's go. Chapter three.